How you guys doing tonight? How am I doing? I'm tired as shit. Uh, I have a three-month-old baby, so you tell me how I'm doing. Oh, but uh, I love all 12 minutes because my baby and my wife make it worth it, so. Speaking of this hoodie, you know, my last show here, these fucks uh, decided to surprise me with this. I like to get off stage usually and not talk. This is the most talking I've probably ever done in my life on stage without the poems. But this is probably one of my favorite hoodies I've, I own. And it's because you all signed it. Uh, uh, and speaking of everybody that signed it, can we please have a moment to sign it for uh, one person that didn't get to make it here and they signed it? You know, Brett, uh, I remember I wasn't able to make it for her funeral, but uh, she definitely was a good friend to me. And she signed this hoodie personally, so I love it even more because of that. So a moment of silence for her. Hey, everybody. Back to the poems, what I like, All right? So, this month is probably one of the hardest months of the year for me. It, it marks uh, the anniversary of my brother's death. Um, and every year it gets a little easier to handle, but it's still hard because he was my twin brother. And um, you can imagine just not having that person who came in with you, just like, ah. Uh, feel like I finished a race a long time ago and I'm just doing extra laps, you know? So please, everybody, uh, just bear with me if I get a little emotional up here. Um, it's, it's a tough time for me. So here's some new shit. So the coffin at my stepfather's funeral gave a eulogy for itself. It went as follows. At first, I wanted to be big and strong, like my father, a tall oak tree, one whose limbs scraped the clouds and kissed the ground. I wanted all my apples not far from this tree. He always told me it was my responsibility to reach for the sun, have my leaves whisper to the wind and soak everything up, let my branches stretch into the sky and spread into the horizon if they're going to try and steal your crown anyway. Make sure it only looks good on you. When they cut me down, I figured if they made me into something great, it would all be worth it. I wanted to be a dining room table and some chairs. I could smile every meal, laughter in the form of streaks in the hardwood floor. I wanted to be a book, ironically about trees. I wanted to be a low-bearing beam at home. I wanted to be anything but a coffin. I didn't want to hug a body when it's lost its warmth. I'm sorry. Was he yours? Because of his snug fit, it seems like you have me mistaken. I wasn't made for him. I've been on this earth too damn long. He was made for me. See, these roots run deeper than those on your family tree. I preferred to be a match. Maybe someone could have used me to strike up a conversation. I would love to be a pencil. Maybe I could have led someone to the right answer, found some conclusion. I never thought I would be the conclusion. I guess I was closer to a book than I thought. I never wanted to be the reason a family splintered apart. I mean, I didn't even get to speak to him first. Now, ironically, I'm a tree in the trunk of a hearse. I may be a chip off the old block, it's true, but burying me won't bear you any fruits. You know, I would like to believe a part of me became a set of drumsticks. Hopefully, they'll feel the beat of something, unlike me. But at least I'll be going back into the ground. Can't say the same for the rest of us. And FYI, with that being said, the next time your grief leaves you stumped when someone dies. Cremation might be what's best for you. Just because you died doesn't mean I earned the spot next to you. That's that piece. 